Hi, I'm Herrick Kimball. In this video, I am going to show you a table saw technique that I developed for cutting a uh, round tenon on an irregular piece of wood. This is a chunk of firewood, and it's a square shoulder tenon, not the tapered or rounded uh, tenons, but a square shoulder tenon, any uh, diameter, any length. Now, this technique that I'm going to show you is something that I think I developed my, on my own, but you know what they say, there's no such thing as an original idea. So perhaps in the past I've seen this or I've seen something like it, but I've looked far and wide for information on how to cut a round square shouldered tenon on an irregular piece of wood. Here it's on a, on a tree branch and I couldn't find it. And you might wonder, well, why? Why would you want to cut a beautiful, uh, precise, square-shouldered tenon like that on a piece of firewood? Well, I'll show you. This is a stool that I made with firewood pieces from this pile right here. And it's been on my mind for years to do this. And I needed to create tenons on the legs. The legs were, the legs were, looked like that when I started, all just split out of a chunk of firewood. The legs are American chestnut, which is kind of a rare wood. And I was delighted to find it in my pile here. And I figured, man, now's the time to get this stool idea, uh, bring it to completion. But anyways, I wanted a one and a quarter inch uh, tenon. And I wanted to be able to cut the tenon with a square edge and then fit it into place and cope it so that it fit the roundedness of this uh, of this top, you know, the tree roundedness. And that's what I did. And I'll show you some uh, closer up pictures of this when I'm done. It's not perfect. The, I got some issues with the legs, but the tenons turned out great. And I'm very, very happy with them. This is, this is a very solid stool. It sits flat. And I'm going to show you right now how to cut these tenons. This tenon cutting idea begins with a table saw cross cut sled right here. This is one that I've had for decades. It's big, it's, it's heavy, but it slides very nice. And this has served its purpose so well. I'll show you the bottom. It's uh, got, you know, two uh, runners on it that fit right on there. It cuts square. I use this, it's big enough where I could use it back in the day for cross cutting uh, cabinet base sides. So anyway, this is where it starts. And there are YouTube videos where they say, you don't need those big old uh, cross-cut sleds. L you know, let me show you how to make a more efficient, nifty little sled. And well, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm telling you, pretty versatile tool being big and old as it is, pretty versatile. So you need some sort of a cross-cut sled is the point. Here I have a piece of that nice American chestnut, beautiful straight grained wood. And I need to get it smaller. I need to get it, you know, something like that right there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into a smaller piece um, with my grandfather's old hatchet here. Let's see. Lacking a fro, the proper tool for this, I'll do this. Now, what I'm trying to do here is get this so that it's not greater than four inches around. And you'll see what I mean, uh, or you'll see why momentarily. There we go. Okay, next. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and cut these ends uh, square. Next, I am going to take this little circle of cardboard. It's an inch and a quarter in diameter. And that's what I want my tenon to be. And I'm going to put that kind of in the center there. And I'm going to set my awl in the center, and I'm going to give it a little, a little indent. Then I'm going to go to the other side, kind of eye up, uh, approximate center there, and do the same thing. All right, next, 
I have four inch diameter circles here with a screw in the center. I'm going to screw those right into those indents. I'm gonna screw them in. See, this is why it needed to be less than four inches, okay? Because it needs to be less than the, than the circle. Get this one on the other end, like that. We sock it right down, okay? Very nice. Now I want to set the blade height to uh, accommodate the inch and a quarter a tenon that I want to make. So half of inch and a quarter is five eighths. And I measured from the center here, from the center here to here is five eighths. So I set the saw so it's right on that or preferably just a skosh low. Better to have it too low and I'll inch up on it later if necessary. I have attached this length of wood right here to my crosscut sled with a, a screw right there and a screw right there. It's not, you know, rock solid, but it's good enough. I have a, you can see where the blade is going to cut right there. And this uh, has a stop. I have a stop set up here. This, this stop would determine the length of my tenon. And this here keeps this from going back too far. All right, I don't wanna, I, I actually did when I first made it. I kept coming into the blade, into the blade. Finally, uh, I figured, well, I'll put a screw there. I had a block there and I took it off. I can't find it, but a screw will do the job. So let's make this tenon. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to run this into the blade a little bit at a time and pull it back and forth, back and forth like that. And I'm gonna be pulling this way. So I'm turning into the wood. Okay, and little by slow, we'll get her done. So we'll get a little closer look here. You can see that I'm creating the tenon right here. Got a little bit of waist here and I'm getting a square shoulder here. I do have a digital caliper, extremely handy tool. I'll turn it on and I'll check my tenon here to see what I've got. It says one and 25 64 And if I go a little bit more, one and three eighths, one, uh, okay. So I do have a little bit more to go. I've done it. I'll show you what I do now after that has been achieved. That's our tenon, and I'm gonna cut the waste off it right here, okay? Alrighty, and then I'm going to chamfer ever so slightly the very end of the, the tenon because I'm going to test fit it, and it, it goes in better if you have a little chamfer on the end. And I have, a one and a quarter inch hole. Oh wow, that's actually a little looser than I would like. I'd like to have it just tight, just tight, almost too tight uh, with the stool, that's what I had. And then um, I just kind of fine tuned it with this uh, sandpaper file. I don't have to do that here, but that's what I did. And that's why I like to have it a little bit over a little bit over the actual size that I want. But uh, by the time I cope that bottom um, and uh, push that through and uh, put glue on it and then wedge it, then um, you know that's gonna be fine. Not, not ideal, I would have liked it a little tighter. But you got the idea. And then to shape my legs, I did it the new fashioned way with my Makita uh, planer. Just just did it quick, you know? That's how you do the, the tenon on an irregular shaped piece of wood. That's, a, that's just a gorgeous tenon right there. Here's the stool, a little closer look. You can see the bottom here, it's uh, got the worm holes. This was probably laying in the woods for a while, starting to decay. I shaped it with uh, that planer, and uh, here's the inch and a quarter tenons. I used that, uh, that saw, that pull saw, to make a slice in them, and then I drove a little wedge in. And here you can see, maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but 
uh, these these legs are coped in, coped and glued. It turned out good enough. A rustic little stool. We put this by the uh, by the wood stove. So I can sit on this and uh, get it going in the morning. Well, that's how you get her done when it comes to putting a square uh, shoulder tenon on an irregular piece of wood. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.